Hello, this is a video about fault finding. It's primarily for my students, but some other people might find it useful as well. This is the circuit we've been working on. It's basically a temperature sensor circuit. We've got a full wave bridge rectifier with an AC input here. Um, we've got a smoothing capacitor, LM7805 5 volt regulator, LM35 temperature sensor, and uh, an op operational amplifier. And on my one, normally what we have is we have uh, a variable resistor on the output so we can adjust the output, but I didn't bring one home with me tonight, so uh, yeah, give me a slap. Anyway, a lot of my students get really, really, really confused with this and, and make it seem extremely difficult. The whole point of uh, these circuits is really to check to see if it's working. So the very first test you should do, apart from all the visual inspection, the very first one you should really do is check to see if the circuit's actually working. And in this case, what we would expect to see on the output would be a multiple of the input from the LM35. Now in the real circuit, the output is set to give, uh, the output is set to increase the input from the LM35 by a factor of 10. But because I didn't bring the resistors home with me, I've had to use two 10K resistors in parallel to, as this resistor here, and the output is 10K. So therefore, for an operational amplifier in non-inverting mode, the gain is going to be one plus ch -ch -ch. I always call this one RF, the feedback resistor, RF over RG, the grounded resistor there. And that's going to be a gain of 1 plus 2 over 1, which will be 3. Now, the LM35 gives a, a voltage output of 10 millivolts per rise in degree C uh, per, per, for each one. And in this configuration, at uh, 2 degrees C, the output's going to be 0 volts, and then it will rise by 10 millivolts per rise in, in temperature. So it's, it's going to be, it, it's in my kitchen, it's in the winter, it's going to be about, I don't know, maybe 20, 21 degrees. And therefore, what we would expect to see on the output of the LM35 would be roughly 200 millivolts, something like that and the output of the operation amplifier would be uh, a multiple of three, three times that, which, is, which would be 600 millivolts. So the very first thing you would do, set up your multimeter, set it to measure voltage. Um, the common obviously goes to ground. So here's our ground here. Okay. And then you're just going to put the other probe onto the output there and 625 millivolts. If we go to the input, which is pin on the LM358, the input is pin 3. Once again, pop it on there and we can see the input of the LM35. Or oh, This is very awkward to do with the camera, by the way, but I'm doing my best. So if I, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you those two points on the schematic. The first one I was, did was the the output, so my probe always on ground, multimeter is on ground, any of the grounds, doesn't matter, okay, and the other one goes to the output, which in this case is pin one of the LM358. And to measure the input, I simply take the positive probe and go to pin three of the LM358. And those two tests would immediately tell you if your circuit's working. Okay. What I'll also do, other things we can check. So, voltage. Usually, the best way of testing these circuits really is, is to do what, what's called half split. Now, if you're new to electronics, of course, a lot of people go in, input to output. But half split will tell you straight away if your circuit's working correctly or not. So once again, um, I'll choose a ground. There we go, there's a ground there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the output of the LM7805. And we know it's working anyway, but if I go to 
ground there and I'll just bend the LM7805 over so you might be able to see it's that pin there and we can see it's virtually 5 volts so that would tell me that if there was a problem with the circuit it's not this side of the circuit it's going to be this side of the circuit I'm going to take the power off now and another test that we should always do on these circuits continuity testing that's testing the that you've got an electrical connection between each of the points and the most important ones are ground well they're all important but the most important ones are ground continuity which always chips my students up and power continuity so for continuity because my hearing's a bit shot to pieces I, I don't use the tone there I use the uh, the lowest setting here on resistance which is 200 ohms short the leads out okay we've got a small resistance there um, less than an ohm and so what, what we're going to do on the schematic is we're going to go from point to point I'm going to go from the uh, bridge rectifier I'm going to go to the bottom of the capacitor LM7805 LM35 all of these points should be connected so if we come to, back to our our um, circuit here choose any ground any ground you care doesn't matter now I'm going to choose this one hopefully we can still see this I can't see what the hell I'm doing um, and so if I go to the bottom of the full wave bridge rectifier I've got continuity if I go to the ground on this LM705 I've got continuity if I go to the this point here I've got come on I should have got yes I've got continuity and if I go to the ground of the LM35 which is over here somewhere I will have continuity same for power if I'm tracing power I'm going from the bridge to fire to the LM7805 okay so output the bridge rectifier input the LM7805 if I haven't got continuity I remove the wire for example look no continuity and you can do these checks really really quickly far quicker than um, trying to pour over each component the components are important of course they are but the the key to good fault finding is being familiar with with your with your test equipment so that's continuity uh, and you can also do resistance testing which is effectively the same thing um, we could do a very quick input to output using our oscilloscope so I'll just connect the circuit back up again it took me ages to make this actually about 15 minutes or something like that so if I was going to do input to output I would set the coupling AC and I would just go across the bridge rectifier first of all, the inputs to the bridge rectifier. Hopefully you can see it. It's a complete and utter nightmare trying to do it like this, but there you are. So where, where I'm connecting is here and here. That's the junction of both those bridge rectifiers. And you can see you've got a nice AC input signal there. Okay, if we take the measure the output of the bridge rectifier that's going to be between the top and the bottom between there and there now I'll show you the ripple I did this in another video but I'll do it again because I like it so much we change the volts per division probably went too far there so that's the ripple so we know that the full wave bridge rectifier is working a bit noisy but it's working if I set this back over to DC and then zoom back down again so I'm changing the volts per division you can see that we've got an output and that's working fine as well so as far as the oscilloscope is concerned the, the, the points of interest really are the input to the circuit and the output of the bridge rectifier um, 
and you know it's just the usual things really you you check it, each of the components in turn make sure you've got a good connection between each of them make sure they're the right way round if the capacitor is the wrong way round it's going to explode if you notice any strange smells it's almost certain you've got a short circuit remember that thing of short circuit um, I'll give you an example of that now imagine I instead of connecting the LM705 to where it's the LM35 you just I'm not going to do it for real because I'll fry the components but you just connect it to ground what will happen then is you will well <laughs> depending on um, the construction of the LM705 it might actually explode but it will get very very hot very quickly you may see smoke you may see stars all that sort of thing okay so check all your components check that the right way round check your lead continuity I've just shown you how to do that um, and Please, please, please get away from this habit of taking photographs of a circuit that you've made so that you can try to find faults in it. The key to all of this is use of test equipment, being able to read a schematic and experience. Okay? So if you go through the tests I showed you there, primarily continuity testing, voltage testing, and component inspection, and you know your way around the schematic, you'll be able to find faults on any electronic circuit. If you know what you're looking for, you know what you're expecting to measure at each point, and you don't measure it, that means there's a problem there somewhere. Okay. I hope that helped. No, no.